Hello, my name is Matthew Penning, and in this video, I'm going to take this Server 2012 R2 operating system and I'm going to promote it to a domain controller. So what I have on my network so far is just a router and this server. And the reason why I want to promote it to a domain controller is because I plan on using it for a business environment. And I plan on having more than 10 users and 10 computers. So essentially, I'm going to centralize all of the user accounts and then all of the computer information tied to one directory or one domain and I'm going to use this Windows Server to do that. So we're going to go ahead and get started but before I do that I need to make sure that I have a static IP address set. So I have Server Manager already open. I'm going to go ahead and click on Local Server and I can see that I do have a static IP address set. I'll go ahead and click on that and I'm going to go ahead and right click on Ethernet so I only have one network card on this computer at this time. I'm going to go down to version 4 and then go to properties. Okay, so I have a static IP address set here, which you can see on my network. The gateway and the DNS server both happen to be my router. And that's at this configuration. When we install the domain controller uh, and we promote this to a domain controller, we are going to change the DNS server. We are going to actually be a DNS server at that time. And so this you'll see will automatically get changed. And we'll come back to that at, after we're done promoting everything because I want to show you that. And then we're going to go ahead and test everything when we're done. So I'm going to go ahead and hit cancel here. Cancel here. I'll go ahead and close out of that. And let's go ahead and begin the process of setting this computer up as a domain controller. I'll go back to dashboard. And then number two is add roles and features here under my dashboard. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And then we're going to go ahead and begin. So this is just the introduction. I'm going to hit next. I'm going to choose to use the role-based or featured-based installation. Now, if you're familiar with working with previous versions of server, this is the setup we used to have. So I'm not going to be doing the second option, which is going to be working with virtual machines. I'm going to go ahead and hit next here. And then the only server I have installed so far that I can work with is my computer, which I have already named DC1. And you can see there's the IP address. So all I need to do again is just hit next. Okay, so now we're to the point where we get to choose which roles we want to turn this computer into. And the one I'm looking for right now is the Active Directory Domain Services. I'll go ahead and click on that. It's going to say, hey, there are additional features out there. Do you want to install those? I'm going to go ahead and say, yeah, I need to have those as well. Now, here is the DNS role. I am not checking it. And the reason for that is because when we do the promotion of the domain controller, it'll be part of the installation package for our Active Directory domain services. So I don't need to worry about anything else right now other than the Active Directory domain service. All right, I'm going to hit next. And we just need to hit next now. There are no additional features that I want. I'll hit next again. And we've now come to the point where it's going to let me know everything that's happening. All I need to do is hit install. So I'll go ahead and hit install. And this is going to take about two minutes, two to three minutes to do this. And then once we're done, we need to promote this computer to a domain controller. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video, and then this is going to be complete, and then we'll go ahead and do the promotion of the domain controller. Okay, so the installation is completed, and there's a little link that sometimes is really hard to find. And you can see right here where my mouse is, promote this server to a domain controller. Often people just miss over that, miss that step and they just kind of look over it. And so I'm going to just go ahead and do that instead of clicking on that because I want to show you where else you can go to get it. So I'll hit close. And if I come up here to the notification flags, you can see if I click on this, I have a post deployment configuration up here. And they're telling me, hey, there's additional things you need to do in order to complete your installation. And they give me the link again right here. So I'll go ahead and click on it this time. And we're going to work on this promotion of our domain controller. The first step is kind of a tricky one to figure out what we want to do. Since I only have one computer and I have one router and that's it. And I have no domain set up for a network. I'm going to use the third option. But I want to explain the first one. The first one says add a domain controller to an existing domain. Well, I don't have an existing domain. But if I had a domain already set up, this option would be used to set up a backup domain controller or additional domain controller to my network. And it's always good to have redundancy. 
The second option here is add a new domain to an existing forest. So if there was already a domain and forest set up. Now a forest gets set up with your first domain and it basically will allow for multiple different domains to all be tied into one family of domains. And so I do not have that set up either. So I don't want to use this option. But if I had two different domains that I wanted to tie together for sharing of permissions, then I would use the second option. The third option is add a new forest. And now it's a little deceiving because it just says new forest. But what they mean by that is we're going to create the forest and then the domain will be created with it. So the domain and forest will share the same name. And that's the option that I want to set up. Now we get to choose what we want for actual domain. Okay, so in the past, in classroom lab environments, a lot of people have used something like lecture snippets dot local, that dot local top level domain name. Well, if you're going to use this only for testing purposes and only in like a school environment, sure, go ahead and use dot local. However, if you're using this for production services like a business, you're setting it up to use and actually run some company's domain, you do not want to use the dot local. And that's because there are some other, there's some SSL certificates that need to have an actual public top level domain name that's resolvable, something like .com or .net or .org or all the other ones that are out there for all the other countries as well. So we want to use that as well as email uh, is going to have a hard time. And then some of the older Macintosh operating systems had a hard time seeing the .local. So what we want to do is I'm going to use something like internal because this is going to be the domain for my internal or my Active Directory domain. So I'll use internal dot and then my public domain. Now what's going to happen for this is I actually own lecturesnippets.com. So in the future, if I wanted to, I could use this internal subdomain and I can actually go into where I have the domain name registered to the company that I have it registered with and I can actually point internal dot to this server's public IP address if I had that set up. So it allows me for in the future to be able to expand the capabilities of the server. So I like this. Other people have used things like AD for Active Directory dot lecture snippets or you can use any other name that you want to use. But I'll use internal for my company domain here. Okay so let's go ahead and move forward. I'll hit next. And now it's going to ask me about the functional level of my forest in my domain. And that's because every time Microsoft comes up with a newer server, we have new features and new capabilities that are part of this whole Active Directory or domain controller. And so we have to decide whether or not we want to work backwards as far as backwards compatibility or we want to stay with the most recent of everything. And you can see I have a choice here for both the forest itself and then also my domain. If I hit the drop down, I have 2008 all the way up to all the way up to 2012 R2. So these four different operating system versions that are out, it can be backwards compatible. We can set this to be backwards compatible so that it runs at their level of capabilities. Well, since this is my only domain controller and I don't plan on going backwards at all, I'm going to leave the forest functional level and the domain functional level both set to Windows Server 2012 R2. Now I had mentioned before that the DNS service is also going to be set up. Now here it is. It's already checked for us. Domain name system and that's because we do not already have a domain name controller out there for our domain name. So it's already been checked. The global catalog is also being set up. Now that's going to hold, think of it kind of like an address or phone book for all of our user accounts and everything all being stored all on this particular computer. So this is going to hold that global catalog and that's what we want when we set up this Active Directory domain services. So that's unable to be unchecked so that's what we need and then I have a password here for the directory services restore mode and this is going to allow us to restore it if something ha happens or something fails with it um, and so what we need, want to do is put a password on here that we could always refer back to in the event that something changes so um, and so what I mean by that is like let's just say the administrative account password changes I need to know this original user password or original password in order to recover our directory services. So put a password in here that you won't forget and let's go ahead and hit. The little warning up there says that it cannot create a delegation for the new domain that we've got set up. That's okay. I'm just going to go ahead and hit next. 
And now it's going to go through and try to figure out the NetBIOS name of our domain. Now NetBIOS is a protocol that's been around for quite a while. It's going to take the first part of whatever I entered in for our domain. I had internal.lectureservice.com, so it's going to use the word internal. Now it is limited to only 15 characters, so if your name was longer, you may see it shortened up. I don't want to have to log in using internal uh, as my domain name, and I don't want it to be recognized as that. So you can come back here and you can change it to something else. And this is what people will use to log in. I could make it like LS if I wanted to, or for lecture snippets, or I could shorten it up in any way that I want. I am limited to 15 characters though. So I'm going to go ahead and hit next. And we will see that by the way when I go back to the login screen once we have it all set up. Okay, and now we've come here to the location of where everything is going to be saved here on our computer. I'm not going to change any of the things here. I'm just going to go ahead and hit next. It's going to ask us to review everything. All right, I'll just hit next. And now it's going through the process of making sure that we have all of the prerequisites installed on our computer in order for this to work. I'm going to get a couple warnings. You always do, um, but nothing that I have to worry about. And so I'm going to go ahead and you can definitely review them if you wanted to. I'm going to go ahead and hit install. And it's going to take anywhere from maybe five minutes to about 15 minutes to set everything up here on the computer. And then it's going to do a restart. So I'll let it go ahead and restart and I'll come back to it after it's done and at the login screen. I will mention, depending on your computer's boot order, if your computer is designed to boot or the BIOS and CMOS settings have been set up to boot from the CD-ROM first, you may see where it says press any key to boot from CD. You do not want to do that. You just want to let the whole system run on its own and then it will eventually get back up here to the login screen. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video one more. Okay, so the computer has restarted and it's taking me back here to the screen to log in. So I'll go ahead and do that. Notice that the username now starts with or is prefixed by the domain name or the NetBIOS name that's set up for your domain. And that's going to allow me to log in. If I want to log back in as one of those local user accounts that I already had installed on this computer before we started adding the domain stuff, then I could do that um, using the computer's name followed by the backslash and then the username. But uh, I'm going to log in as the administrator here of our domain. So I'll go ahead and use my password that was set up for the administrator before we did this whole process and that'll log me in here. And it's going to take a minute or two to set everything up. Server manager should load here automatically and then we can kind of see all of the roles that have been installed on our computer from there as well. And what I need to do is once this loads up is I'm going to go back and just double check to make sure under my network configuration, in fact I can do that right now, configure this local server, I want to make sure that the domain name server has been set to myself or my own computer using what's called the loopback address. And so I can show you by clicking on that and then going back here to the Ethernet and properties and then going back to version 4 and properties that the DNS server now instead of it being the router I have on my network is now going to be a loopback address of 127.0.0.1 which means anytime I try to resolve a domain name such as like lecturesimbus.com or google.com it's going to ask itself where that domain name exists and then my server will go out and ask other DNS servers if it can find or it will actually ask them if they know of the IP address of all the different domain names that exist out there. Okay I'm just going to go ahead and hit cancel here on mine and I'll hit cancel one more time because I don't need to make any changes and close that. I also want to point out that if you look here into the local server, I now have a domain. It says internal.lecturesnippets.com, and that is going to be my Active Directory internal domain here for my company. Okay, so that concludes this video on setting up the Active Directory domain controller. If I wanted to check out Active Directory, I could go to Tools, and then I could go to the Users of Computers here. I will be covering that in a later video. Uh, as far as adding accounts, setting up things, uh, doing group policy and so forth throughout this series that I'm setting up here for Server 2012. But I can see under my domain controllers, I have one computer, which is the domain controller one I have set up. And under my users, I have just one active user called administrator by default. But I can come in here and add additional users. And then if I add computers to my domain, I will see those here, which I will actually cover that here in the next video. 
uh, adding a computer, a client computer, to this actual domain that we have set up. But if you want to learn more about Server 2012, definitely visit my site, lecturesnippets.com, and you can find more information on Server 2012, as well as a lot of other IT-related videos. Have a great day.